Everything that has a manufactured day has an expiry date. The good news is that this month marks the expiry date of every shame in your life. Everything less than God's glory must be terminated in your life this month. In the name of Jesus. Glory is our portion in God. Over the weeks, Sunday services, we have been looking at the subtopic, riding the waves of glory. Riding the waves of glory. Psalm 63, and verses 1 to 3, has been our major text. Psalm 63, and verses 1 to 3. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see your power and your glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. My soul tasted for thee, verse 2. My flesh longed for thee. To see your power and your glory. To see your power and your glory. Until you are empowered, you cannot see his glory. The more empowered you are, the more dimension of the glory of God that you enjoy in life. Why? Because in life, there are battles. There are battles. It is the power of God that makes you an overcomer, which eventually reveals the glory that you enjoy. The way to Canaan is full of all manners. The way to the promised land. On the way, there are giants. The Red Sea is there. There are Jordans to cross. There are Sambalat and Goliaths to conquer. Hallelujah. On the way to the promised land, Oh, the Philistines are always there. And that's why you need the power of God to conquer them because it's not by power. It's not by might. But by my spirit, see the Lord. Except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen, they stay awake in vain. Except you enjoy the help of God, every little challenge of life will conquer you. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the world is not ruled by men of strength, but men of sense. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. You know, those days when we were small and growing up, somebody can be bigger than you in size, but that doesn't mean that he can beat you. If you have sense. Somebody who is taller than you, his center of gravity is higher. You who is shorter, your center of gravity is closer to the ground, so you are more stable. So look for his legs. Praise the name of the Lord. He just pretend as if you don't want to fight. So I will slap you. I will slap you. you are just, all you are doing is targeting his leg. The way some of you are looking at me, I know you are. You are also there before. Praise the name of the Lord. Before the person knows what is happening, you have packed the legs. As soon as it's on the ground, you look for sand around. And when you hit and hit and hit, just quickly get up and move to where people are. Praise the name of the Lord. And be talking from there. You know, you stay there. They say, it's okay, it's okay. It's not okay. Leave me. Let me kill him. Let me... Oh, why did you people separate us? 
If I'm there, I'll say, oh yeah, let's leave him. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That's where we need the Holy Ghost. There are battles in life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, a great and effectual door is opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. The greater the door, the greater the adversaries. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. A great door. An effectual is open, but there are many adversaries. There are forces that are just determined. Just without any cause. They don't just want you to go forward. They are just angry when you are making progress. And in a bit, they can do it. They want to do anything to stop you. That's where the God of vengeance comes in. They just look at you. How that you are smiling every day. They are angry. From the distance they look at you. What is making him laugh? What is making him laugh? Oh, just be smiling. Just be happy. Must you be happy? They are just angry. They, they don't want to hear your promotion. They don't want you to dedicate any house. They don't want to hear anything good. That's why the God of vengeance is there. If you are too quiet, they will bury your destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. They will bury your destiny. They will. As gentle as Jesus was. One day he just got to the temple. He find them buying and selling. He took whip. Whip. No spiritual whip. Physical whip. You know whip? What do they call whip? Koboko. How do they say it in your language? Huh? Yeah, yeah. He whipped them everywhere, overturned the tables. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer. You turn it to a den of thieves? No way. Not when I'm alive. Whoop! Whip them out to clear the temple. And yet some people have vowed that they will watch you suffer sickness until you die. That's not your portion. Any arrow of such arrows they have thrown, it is returned back to sender now. How can somebody sit down there and say, I will see how you have your child. I will see how you have your children. Not when I'm alive. And here that person has her own children and everything. And then that is the one you are praying for to be born again. Some people, any time they wake up, they ask, did you see him today? Did you see him today? They say, yes. Say, eh? He woke up. He woke up. Are you sure he's the one you saw? You saw him. He woke up. Eh? Is he okay? Or he's sick or something? Say, no, no, he's very okay. But he's bubbling. Say, eh? ah. Ah. Okay, let me go back again. They don't want you alive. They are the ones who will not live. Anyone that have taken your name anywhere that have said you will not live, we send them to the grave in the name of Jesus. There are some that have made up their mind that that family, there will be no peace and rest. They have made up their mind. Manipulating everybody in the family. Physical, diabolical, and everything. They all this family. They are intelligent people. See all of them. They went to school and everything. Let's scatter them. Scatter them. Let's make sure that none of them find any reasonable thing to do. So you find in some family, you have very intelligent people. You know, wear red and all that, but no headway. This one engineer, this one doctor, this one uh, this thing. Great professions and all that. Business, you know, everything just scattering and nothing is coming together. And you'll be wondering what is happening. And yet these people are sources of lifting to other people. But yet they can't organize and they can't find anything in their life because of manipulative forces, some wicked forces that has vowed 
that no anyone will make any meaning in that family. Today, that is reversed in the name of Jesus. And every of such perpetrators, my God will visit them with vengeance in the name of Jesus. You see, the way you shout your amen in this service determines how quick God arrests all your enemies. I said the fire of God rests upon them. The arrow they have sent is sent back to them. Their desire to see you dead is returned back to them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the world is full of wickedness. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. The wickedness of the wicked wants to leave you with reproach in life when God has ordained a life of glory for you. If you are redeemed, you are ordained for glory, not for shame, not for pity. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For glory, for beauty, for beauty. You are not ordained for a life of pity, for glory. Genesis 26 and verses 12 to 14. Isaac ended up in dignity. He became an envy of the people. Not a pity. This man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. And what happened, verse 14? He had possession of flocks, of herds, great store of salmon. And the Philistines, the owners of the land, they envied him. He was a stranger. And they envied him. That's the kind of life that God has ordained for every one of us. A life of glory. A life of beauty. Not shame. A life to be envied. That people will look at you and say, ah, they want to be like you. Not shaking their head. Not shaking their head. Your destiny, your life is not expected to be an explanation, but an exclamation. Not explaining all the time. People asking questions. Why? Why? Why is he like that? Why is she like that? Ha. I thought he's a winner. He's you not know, winner. He's we, we, we. Nah. Why? Nothing is happening. Why? And then you begin to explain again. You see, you see, actually, in fact, that's not it. From today, you will not explain failure again. Yeah. Your life is supposed to be an exclamation. When they saw Jesus in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15, they listened to him. They said, ah, where has this man, this wisdom, and this mighty works? Eh? Eh? I've never seen this in this dimension before. That's how your life should be. They should look at your business and say, wow. They should look at your children and say, hey. They should look off at your husband or your wife and say, mm-hmm. That's how it's supposed to be. From today, every issue of shame is buried in your life. That's what the Holy Ghost helps us to do. He helps us fighting all our battles, taking over all our battles, so that the glory of God will be seen in our lives. The Holy Ghost helps us to live a profitable life. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. To live a profitable life. It's given to us to make profit, not losses, not down, not a life of mediocre. Not to be on the ground. No. No. To live a profitable life. To live a life of gains. To live a life of results. Not that you are working, working, you are struggling, you are laboring and nothing to show. Nothing to show. You are not expected to explain to people the result, the testimonies of God in your life is expected to, exp- is, is expected to explain who your God is. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. He says, shall come to us. Ten men shall hold the skirt of one man and say, let us go to your God. We also want to go and pray with you. We will go with you. 
We have heard that this is your God is with you. We have seen. We have seen it. We know who you were before. We knew your story before. See how God has changed you. You don't need to tell us anything. No. No. The testimonies of our life is expected to bring people to Jesus. The changes, the transformation of our lives. I had the testimony of that brother. They have been struggling with so many things. But since I gave my life to Christ, I have rest. Rest, I can sleep where I have favor, blessings, rolling from everywhere. I'm at peace. I'm at peace. Testimonies of your life should draw people to Jesus. They shouldn't ask you. When they see, they will follow you. Who doesn't like good things? Who doesn't like success? Who doesn't like breakthrough? Nobody. Praise the name of the Lord. Who doesn't? Everybody likes good things. Everybody wants to celebrate success. That's why in Africa, whoever is succeeding is a brother to everybody. Everybody is a brother. You say, ah, that person, ah, it's my uncle. It's my uncle. And maybe, you know, this kind of coincidence, you are even bearing the same name. Some names are compound names in places. They say, okay, name. Is the name of the Lord? He said, It's my uncle. It's my uncle. It's my uncle. Say, Hey, it's your uncle. Yes, oh, it's my uncle. Is he not the man that has that those estate? It's my uncle now. It's my uncle. Everybody wants to identify with success. Nobody wants to identify with a thief and arm robber. Even when they know him. Somebody now passed. I said, I saw somebody on the road. In fact, you people look exactly. Only that is a madman. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, when I saw that person, it looks as if you people resemble too much. You won't allow the person to finish saying, say, Who? Eh? God forbid. I throw him. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Holy Ghost helps us to live a profitable life, a speaking life. That everything around you is speaking, your business is speaking, in your career, your career is speaking, your children's life are speaking, everything is speaking. And then souls will be turned into his kingdom to live a profitable life. And then the Holy Ghost expresses himself in diverse areas of life. And those are what we have been looking at from the previous Sundays. This morning we are looking at some other operations of the Holy Spirit. Number one, operations of the Holy Spirit. One is the spirit of love. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of love. Is a spirit of love. Is a spirit of love. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. The spirit of love gets you crazy for Jesus. Fills your heart with commitment. You are not tired serving God. The spirit of love makes you go all out for Jesus. Makes you take, in quote, a risk for God. How do you explain Abraham? God told him, the only child he waited for, for 100 years. And when the child eventually came, God said, sacrifice the child for me. No question, nothing. Is that not a risk? Humanly speaking, you say, Are you, can't you think? If it is true now, eh, one will say, okay, at least whatever happens, even though still, but at least whatever happens, at least you have something to fall, fall back to. At least. But only one, and that's the one God is asking. That's what the spirit of love does. 
When the spirit of love is at work, and you, you don't question any instructions from God, his instruction becomes a law to you. The spirit of love. Hallelujah. When the spirit of love is at work, you are dead. Your life is no more yours. All that is beating in your heart will be what is beating in the heart of God. The spirit of love cannot be working in you and you don't have the zeal and the passion for souls. No. They don't have to talk and talk and talk to you. It works. It will be seen. When the spirit of love is inside of you, you must love this house. You must love this house. Not all this one leg in, one leg out. You are in church only once in two weeks or one in a week. And even when you come, you just come, say, today now what? The today now anointing, make we go knock out for our head again. No. Something driving you. Something driving you. Something driving you. Hallelujah. The spirit of love drives there is nothing you can't do for God. There is nothing you can't give to God. There is no time you cannot spend with God. Every Sunday, do you know there are people here on their own. Nobody knows them. They bring buses with people. They, are on, they charter the buses, pay for the buses, bring the people. They harvest. They are doing it every week. There are people that bring trucks. There are people that bring humbies. They are just lost for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Just lost. Serving Jesus. They are not bothered with title. They, are, well, it's not that, no. they want God's approval, not men's commendation. That's what the spirit of love does. When it overwhelms you, oh, you are excited or anything about God, you don't wait to be called. No. There are people here that goes out on outreach every day. Every day. Every day. Come for prayer. Come for, they go for outreach. Don't tell me they don't have what to do. It is, they have programmed a time with God. There are people who leave their offices and rush in here to come and join in prayers and in outreach and go back. There are people that leave their business places even have to shut down if they don't have somebody there for that time. One, two hours, they will come in. We had a little time of prayer meeting with one of the outreach teams. And one woman was sharing her testimony that she will lock her shop and be here for morning raid. When in the morning, when all everybody is struggling to sell and sell, she will go for evangelism. Lord, as I'm doing your own, do my own. Do my own. And then the moment she returned back to her marketplace, maybe around 12, where everybody, where you should have expected that everybody has collected all the market, he said between that time and the evening she closes, she has made all her sales for almost a week. Praise the name of the Lord. The love of God. When the love of God is in your heart, it will drive you. It will drive you. There are people here that since this year started, they have not attended covenant hour prayer. But it's not in the agenda. It's not. Neither do they attend any outreach or home self fellowship. They will just send their children there. Oh, yeah, make they go. Go, 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 go. Make I sleep. Oh, yeah, go, all of you. Where are you? Go. If they lock the doors, thank God. Before they come back, make I sleep. And home cell is just their next door neighbor. The love of God drives you for anything concerning God. And to such people, you just see all things working together for their good. Romans 8, 28. All things working together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Everything just working in their good. Even when the enemy meant it for bad, God turns it to them. I won't forget a testimony a brother shared. Some years ago, I went for an official assignment in a church, one of our churches. And then, here is the testimony of this brother. He said, in his place of work, 
because he's the only Christian. And then the other colleagues he had was brought in by his boss because the boss doesn't like his presence in that department. And so the boss brought in that person eventually to substitute him at the end of the day. And then, they were there, he was praying, every little thing, the boss will want to fire him, and all, and he was just playing that game. And then, the time of promotion came. It was a good opportunity for the boss to push him away. And then, they asked the boss to send names. And he sent his name. There were two places. One place is for to take over an assignment from the big office that somebody was leaving. So it was also an opportunity for the boss to favor his own person and then push this our brother to one other place in the village. And so, but incidentally, these two people were bearing the same name, the same first name, like people bearing Emmanuel, Emmanuel, or something like that. Maybe the surname was what differs. And so, the boss was going to give his recommendation. The place which is actually promotion that he targeted for his own person, he mistakenly put our own man and the other place, he put the other person and sent it. And then the thing went. The board met and everything, ratified that and all that. And then the letters came. And then when he saw the letter, he was very angry. What is this? By the time he was going to contact them, he said, no. They sent him back his letter and all that. And it's closed. And he was to move immediately. That was how this our brother quickly moved. Quickly moved. And by the time he got there, within one year, God has given him a miracle house. Very cool. So many he got married, so many other blessings he counted. The enemy meant for evil, but God turned it from. Hallelujah. The spirit of love will always make all things to work together for your good. For your good. For your good. Love for God. Love for men. Love for God. Love for men. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples indeed. Love for God and love for your fellow men. Don't live a life of selfishness. Think about the good of others. If you love God, it will be easy for you to forgive men. Love for God. Love for your fellow men. Praise the name of the Lord. Love for God. Love for your fellow men. Husband and wife. Living in, in, in hatred. Living in unforgiveness. I won't forgive this woman. This man, the thing he did, I won't forgive him. I won't forgive him. Love covers multitude of sins. Love does not see with the eye of wrong. Praise the name of the Lord. Love. When the love of God is in your heart, it will make you to please God. Praise the name of the Lord. And then when you run after God in this dimension, the Holy Ghost takes over. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, Neither has he come to the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love them. You enter into a strange dimension of breakthroughs in life. When you are a lover, die lover of God. Die heart lover of God. Number two, oppression of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11 and verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 11 and verses 1 to 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. When the spirit of the fear of God is at work in you, you will not want to offend God. You will not do anything that will want God to depart from you. When the fear of God is upon you, you will not kill your conscience. When the spirit of the fear of God is upon your life, it will govern your actions, your word, your disposition, what you do both in the secret and in the open. Because men may not see you in the secret, but God sees you in the secret. So if you fear God, you will watch what you do in the secret. You will watch what you say in the secret. Hallelujah. You will watch what you do to your neighbor. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. You will not do anything that will bring reproach to the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The fear of God. Joseph said, I fear God. A young man in his days, what they offer him was what every young man needed during his day. Potiphar's wife said, I'm free, I'm available. And then, if you will oblige to what I want, everything you want, everything, suffering is over in your life. Over. <laughs> Joseph said, I fear God. I fear God. I fear God. What any man, any other young man may look like an open door. Joseph said, I fear God. Maybe it was another young man. We say, we thank God. We thank God. I remember last Sunday we had covenant day of open doors. This is a confirmation. I fear God. I will not do this if against God. Not just against my master. Against the fear of the Lord. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom. Watch what you do. Don't just fear man. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. And walk in integrity. Fear God. Fear God. You had no job. Somebody opened up a shop and put you there to be managing until you are able to build up and then go into whatever you want and you are stealing from that place. Until you crumble that business. You now resign. You say your uncle died. And you think you can use that money to establish your own. It won't last. Because wealth gotten by vanity will diminish. Somebody bought a car and gave you to be driving. And you kill that car. Because you want to buy your own. Use it to do this thing. Collect money, collect money, and you go back. And you say, ah, oh God, two out. The tire spoil. The brake failed. Did this one fail? So I was in the mechanic all through the day. All lies. And the person will say, oh, sorry. You must have, have you eaten? No, I just wanted the thing to be done. And it's a lie. The person will carry money for telling lies. They will pay you for telling lies. And you will collect. You say, thank you, sir. Ah. Don't you fear God? That's not smartness. That's smartness to the world. But that's foolishness in the kingdom. Because while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Walk in integrity of heart. Walk in the fear of God. When you walk in the fear of God, he opens unto you his secrets. Secrets. Hallelujah. Secret that will distinguish you. Psalm 25 and verse 14. The secret of the Lord 
is unto them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. He will show them. God will show you the secret to turn you to a show on the earth. Walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. If you are married, stay with your wife. Stay with your husband. Praise the name of the Lord. Stay. If you are in any business, be faithful. If you are in partnership, be faithful. Don't outplay the other person. Somebody has brought you to a business just to help you. And you go back, you go and play that person out of that business. With lies. There is nothing wrong in God helping you to start. Somebody invited you to a business. When time, if God, God can give you your own business and independent, there is nothing wrong. But do it in righteousness. Do it in righteousness. Don't go and close somebody's door because you want to open your own. There are so many doors to open. The sky is big for every bird to fly. You don't have to pull somebody down because you want to go up. No. No. Wish everybody well and it will be well with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Wish everybody well and it shall be well with you. The fear of the Lord. It is the fear of God that checks your conduct in life. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. He helps you to please God. To walk in the fear. He keeps your conscience alive. There is nobody that wants to do evil that he doesn't have a check. You only refuse to listen to the voice. Something was telling you, hey, hey, hey this thing you want to do is bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. You, you stay small. Say, hmm. You think small. You say, but it's only once I will do it now. Something was telling Talking, talking, and talking. That's the Holy Spirit. It's keeping your conscience alive. But some people deliberately kill it. Kill it. They will be in church. They will hear. They will read God's word. God will speak to them through the word. But they will close their ears. Close their ears. It's what they want to do that they will do. It's what they want to do that they will do. They will make up their mind. As I'm speaking now, somebody is saying there, say, if you like, shout from there to tomorrow. When I finish service now, I know where they go. He will still go to his joints tonight. But some people straight from service will go somewhere. And he's listening. His conscience is telling him. He will be pushing him and saying, I beg. Let him be home. Not be because you see me for church. Holy Ghost helps you to walk in the fear of God. Number three. Operation of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? Because Moses has laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. As did as the Lord commanded him. They hearkened unto him. The spirit of wisdom came upon him. So God shows him what to do part time. To command the obedience of the people. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom will not make you frustrated in life. The spirit of wisdom will not make you stagnated in life. It will always show you what to do. You will always know what to do. Concerning Jesus in John chapter 6, the Bible says, He himself, he knew what to do. He himself, he knew what to do. There was no food there. There was no money, as it were, physically. And then the people were all out there. The disciples were running helter skelter. And Jesus said, No, 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 let them sit down in the 50s. Where is that two fishes? He blessed it. And then he began to multiply. At another time, they came to him with a testing question. We caught this woman in an act of adultery. And according to the law of Moses, we should stone her to death. And you have said we shall not kill. What do we do? It was a tempting question. They have loaded heavy stones into their pocket. And then he bent down. Was writing on the ground. 
provoking the help of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, let him who does not have any sin be the first to cast the first stone. That was the answer. And then the stones began to drop from their hands and they turned back. He was never stranded because this spirit was at work. From today, you will never be stranded. God will show you answers to every naughty situation of life. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Wisdom generates mighty works. Matthew 13, 54. Mighty works. Mighty works. When wisdom is at work, you don't end up as a mediocre in life. It brings you to the lamb light. In this commission, let me tell you just truly, it is not only anointing that is being celebrated in this commission. But much more celebrated is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. To have a large ministry like this, yet without crisis, it takes the wisdom from heaven. Same operation. You go to any of our churches now. What you are hearing now is what you are hearing there. Praise the name of the Lord. Same spirit. Same operation. Praise the name of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom. Same operation. Same operation. Only difference in sizes, but same operation. Hallelujah. Same operation. The spirit of wisdom. We have so many churches in Delta State, for instance. And every month... We have the record of every one of them as their operation on the table here. The same way in our international headquarters, all our churches in thousands around the globe, all the operation is there on the table every month. You can say on that table what is happening in all the churches by reason of administration, wisdom, operation. So life and destiny is not at the best just by capacity. But you need this spirit of wisdom at work. Some have great potential, but they lack wisdom, and so they crash. Most organizations, most great organizations that crash, that crashes today, it is not capacity. It is only lack of good wisdom and money. They have the resources. You may have the resources. If you don't have the wisdom to manage the resources, it comes down to zero level. That's why you have some children. Oh, they have great parents. They inherited great wealth from their parents. And in no little time, nothing. You will wonder, ah, where are all these assets? Mismanagement. They have sold it. He comes to there, carries this car. Maybe he's not, you know, just yopi yopi boys. Carry this car, carry, go and hit this car. I don't like this car. Carry another one, you know. He just want to throw one big party, call all his friends. Is there any cash around? Okay, what of that land there? Sell it. How much? Anyhow, Saturday we must do that party. Sell it, sell it, sell it. Collect anything they give you. That's how you finish selling all the property. No wisdom. The resources are there. That's why we need the spirit of wisdom in our lives. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. Where you are now is only a starting point. There is greatness for you waiting. Wisdom generates mighty work. Show me a man that will end up in greatness. I will show you one that is working. Whose the spirit of wisdom of God is working in his life. All the people we see in scriptures, they ended up great by the workings of wisdom in their life. Today, by this anointing, you are receiving these operations in your life. In the name of Jesus, it's our covenant day of vengeance where God is going to be running at all the enemies of your life. And anywhere they have held down your destiny, they will give way in the name of Jesus. Did I hear your loud amen? 
But why must we invoke vengeance? Number one. Why must we evoke vengeance? Our God is a God of vengeance. He's a God of vengeance. Psalm 94 and verse 1. O God, to whom all vengeance belong, show yourself. So God is a God of vengeance. Why must we execute vengeance? Number two. Even Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayers. Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayer. Luke 18, 1 to 8. Remember that widow? Avenge my enemy speedily. He spoke a parable to that light. To pray. And then he gave an illustration of one kind of prayer. That this woman prayed. Avenge me of my enemies. So he taught us to pray. Prayer of vengeance. It's not all the time you pray for people to be born again. There are people that will never be born again. You leave them, they can thwart your destiny. Why vengeance? Number three. Execution of vengeance is one major way to put in an end to the wickedness of the wicked. It helps to put an end to the wickedness of the wicked. Psalm 7 and verses 9 to 13. Psalm 7 and verses 9 to 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. And then, if sentence against the evil worker does not come speedily, he will not stop it. So it brings to an end the wickedness of the wicked. The only way to end and stop the hands of the wicked is to evoke vengeance. Number four. To be exempted from the horror of the day. To be exempted from the horror. There are wickedness, horrors. When you draw vengeance, it will not only stop the enemy, but it will keep you away. The greatest act of defense is to attack. Praise the name of the Lord. Why vengeance? It is our redemptive right. To cause every source of satanic oppression in our lives. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 14 to 17. Isaiah 54, 14 to 17. It is our covenant right in redemption. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from the terror, for it shall not come near thee. Verse 15. Behold, they will surely gather together. But not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for your sake. Behold. Go to verse 17. Go to verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You will condemn. This is our heritage. It is our covenant duty and right to decree vengeance. And God takes over from us. Hallelujah. Today, all your enemies must go to hiding. Anyone that wants to see you down, they will be pushed down in the name of Jesus. Quickly, before we rise up to administer the anointing, which is one major tool for vengeance. If you are not born again, what a great opportunity. This is an opportunity for you to be born again. Jesus will come into your life. You will never remain the same. Except you are born again, you are not saved. The arrows are flying every day. Every time. You are not secured, you are not saved. Don't risk your life. Don't risk your destiny. The enemies that are fighting your destiny, you are too weak to confront them. Give your life to Jesus and let him take over the battles. Wherever you are, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus before and backslidden. Quickly, you want to join up. You want to reconnect to Jesus. Rise up on your feet. All these two categories, wherever you are, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus. Can I ask you to rise quickly, 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 and begin to come forward. And if you have given your life to Jesus sometime, but you must lead it, you want to reconnect back to Jesus, please rise up with them, start coming, start coming. Church, help me clap for them. Wherever you are, start coming now, start coming now. Keep clapping for them. Start coming quickly, quickly, quickly. Start coming. What a day for you. Come quickly, come quickly. 
wherever you are. Keep clapping for them, they are coming. You don't know where the next arrow is coming. You don't know. Why don't you secure your destiny now? Come quickly, come quickly, God bless you. Come quickly. Keep clapping for them. Church, keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Why are you still seated there? Somebody is watching me and say, I'm the one pastor is talking about. I'm the one. Your body is the only one sitting there. Your spirit is in front. Come, 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 come. Rise up. Begin to come. Begin to come. Begin to come. Thank you. Begin to come. Begin to come. Church, are you clapping for them? They are coming. They are coming from everywhere. Oh, they are coming from everywhere. Help me clap for them. They are coming. Come quickly. If I were you, I would celebrate them. Can't you see Jesus winning? Can't you see Jesus winning? Can't you see Jesus winning? I thought you can clap more than that. I thought you can clap more than that. Salvation of soul is the greatest miracle. I thought you would clap more than that. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. All these wonderful people. I'm so, so delighted to see you. Take this decision. It is a decision you will never, never regret. God is concerned about everyone. God loves everybody. God wants everybody to be saved. What a joy. You have taken this decision. It will bring a turnaround in your life in the name of Jesus. All those coming, join us. Bow your head, all those in front. Lift up your right hand now. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I realize I'm a sinner. But you die for me. You save me from my sins. Jesus, my heart is open. Come into my life now. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I will serve you. From today, I will walk with you. Thank you for receiving me. Because I believe you in my heart. And I've confessed you with my mouth. Now, I am born again. Amen. Put just that hand on your chest now. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this precious soul you have drawn into your kingdom. I put a seal over them. None of them will draw back in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Open your eyes. Shall come to pass in that day. The body shall be taken away from your shoulders. And the yoke of your neck, it shall be destroyed by reason of the anointing. By this anointing this morning, whatever it is that is fighting against your destiny, it shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, everyone manipulating your destiny, today, they shall no more see the light of the day in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare this oil blessed, sanctified. I release the power of God upon it right now. It becomes a rod of signs and wonders. It will swallow up every Egyptian. It will bring down every Goliath. It will dry every Jordan. In the name of Jesus. This oil is blessed and sanctified. In the name of Jesus. And I decree by the power of God. By this anointing now. Every wickedness of the wicked. Is terminated in the name of Jesus. Every diabolic manipulation against your life, against your destiny. Today, I command judgment in the name of Jesus. Everyone manipulating your marital destiny, manipulating your fruitfulness. Today, they will not see the light of the day anymore. By this anointing, anyone calculating death for you, I command, they will be the one to take your place in the name of Jesus. Every grave that they have dug for you, they will push them in, in the name of Jesus. Everyone that have covenanted with the devil that you will not marry. That your life will not have any color. Today we command the fire of the Holy Ghost upon them. Everyone that has said. Your children will not make mark in life. Today. I command evil. The, I command the fire of God upon them in the name of Jesus. Everywhere they have tied down your destiny. That you will not get a job. That you will not also be anything in life. You have been struggling and struggling because of that cause. Today, 
I command the thunder of heaven to strike down. By this anointing today, any evil gathering against you and your family is hereby scattered in the name of Jesus. Is hereby scattered in the name of Jesus. Everywhere they have thrown a road of sickness that is making you today you are sick, tomorrow you are well, next tomorrow you are sick. Today, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, that same arrow is sent back to sender. It is sent back to where it came from. In the name of Jesus. By this anointing upon your head, every evil influences of the enemy is hereby broken. Is hereby cancelled. For you, it shall be healings. It shall be restoration. It shall be favor. It shall be breakthroughs. For your enemies, it shall be calamities. It shall be death. It shall be fire. It shall be thunder. In the name of Jesus. As this oil comes over your head right now, I command your liberty established and judgment against your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Put it upon your forehead and begin to prophesy right now. Prophesy. Lift up your voice and prophesy. Oh, leborula bo shandala barando sekle koto setoro boria. Maklam porondo sekle ketoro bolos. Meri bala barando soto koto sete. Abra la boria ambalando soto soto. Robolo bolo 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 bos. E kata. E kata. Abra li abralando soto koto koto susa. La bria la bolos. E keto susa. La bra li abla bosha. Makla bala baba. Ma santo robolo bosha. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus. Mighty name we are prayer. Put a little on your lid right now. Whatever internal organ that is defected, whatever the doctors have said, whatever thing that is moving in your body, that is causing all manners of negative effects in your life, whatever organ in your body that is not in sound shape, your kidney, your liver, your lungs, your digestive system, anything in your body, by this oil, I command the liquid fire of God to burn them up in the name of Jesus. I command your instant restoration in the name of Jesus. Take it in now. And whatsoever the Lord shall do it, it shall be forever. Your liberty is finally established. No more traces of evil around your life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen or ear heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. God bless you.